Are you still experiencing knee pain after having a total knee replacement? So whether you've had your knee surgery recently or it's been 10 years, we're gonna show you seven ways that you can manage and get rid of your knee pain. So tip number one is for someone that recently just had their knee replaced, and that is taking your pain pills on schedule. Oftentimes people will take them too late or when they start feeling the pain, and oftentimes they have to wait a while till it kicks in and they can catch up. If you're having pain, you're less likely to do your exercises and you're gonna progress at a slower rate. That's right, can't emphasize it enough. If you're having problems or you don't think the pain meds or your therapist will help you out with this, contact your doctor and they can make adjustments. I've had it happen many times successfully and you get back on track and things are moving again more comfortably. Tip two is again for if you recently had a knee replacement and that is make sure to use the cold pack. This can really help with the inflammation you're feeling and the pain issues. That's right. So make sure you've got a cold pack. Uh, and they'll talk to you about this before you leave the hospital. A nice cold pack that's gel so that when you take it out of the freezer, it actually conforms around that knee. I always like to have two cold packs with a lot of my patients so that when they would use it, that have cloth or always a layer of clothing over their skin, over their knee, cold pack here, but actually I'd put one underneath as well, particularly after therapy when you've irritated it, the tissues are starting to become inflamed from the therapy, which is normal. Cool it down for 15 to 20 minutes with some nice cold packs, it'll be key. The cooler packs you probably get from your surgeon as well will work perfectly fine. Most of the time you actually get that jug to haul around, connect to it. Oh. Those work good too. Mm -hmm. Now the next tip is for someone that has been out of surgery for quite a while and doesn't have a bunch of inflammation going on. Maybe it's a few months or years, but sometimes using a hot pack to loosen up the muscles can definitely help. This, like we showed earlier, is a gel pack. It can be microwaved as a hot pack as well. These work perfectly fine. Make sure to have layers on, especially if you have sensitive skin. Typically after that prolonged period of time, it's safe to use a hot pack on a knee replacement. Now tip number four is also here heat, but it's a different style that Brad is going to talk about. That's right. So again, how long do you wait before you want to use a hot pack? There's no specific time. Typically before two or three weeks, you're going to use a cold pack. After that, you may want to use a hot pack. I had an experience with a patient. He was having problems with a cold pack. It was about a month after surgery. He started using a hot pack and boy, did things change then. So, you know, talk to your therapist or your doctor if you have any questions. Now, you can use, this is a conventional hot pack that you, uh, you can heat up in a microwave or there's uh, typical ones that you can plug in and they'll heat about skin deep, maybe a couple millimeters. Now, if you wanna get something that goes deeper into the muscles, the tissues, into the joint, you get a far infrared and it will go, they've done studies, 2.36 inches, so it's quite deep. You need to leave it on a little bit longer than a conventional hot pack because it takes time for that heat to penetrate usually 30 to 45 minutes. Uh, and the thing with these, you have to put them on in a certain direction. The heat from the uh, fire infrared actually comes out one, one side of the pack, not on this side. So you make sure you understand how to use it. Uh, let's get it up here so you can see that. And this one is a, a Thermatex and we really like these, they work well, they're built very well. And like this, you would wrap it around like this. They have an elastic strap so that you can go around and it'll stay there. Works very nicely. You may use a pillow to make it relaxed, watch TV and let it warm up. You might do this before you do some stretching on it so things are relaxed and warm and have better success with getting that range if you're not bending it or straightening it as well as you'd like. So they're nice devices, but they are a little more spendy. You'll find that out. Uh, they're not necessary. You can go with those. Um, it just does go quite a bit deeper. All right, now to keep your knee moving and to gain range of motion, if you don't have enough flexion or bend or you need to straighten it out all the way, which is desirable, of course, you're probably in the hospital, what they call waxing the floor. You have a smooth floor in the therapy room. You would take a towel and put it down and you would slide that towel across the smooth floor. It works reasonably well. Now, at home, if you have carpeting, you'll find out that it doesn't work so well. Okay, an option that works really well is 
The knee glide is made specifically for after surgeries on the knee. You can put it down on the floor. You can have shoes on or without shoes and it really allows the knee to uh, glide very, very smoothly. A nice thing about it is you can take your good foot over the top and give it a little extra pressure or you can hold it with your hands. As a therapist, I liked it because it made it much easier. The foot would glide on a nice track. You would not have to worry about that as well as you can change the angle just like that. Works very well that way. Emphasizes quad strength and then this way as well emphasizing hamstring strength, and it only weighs three pounds, it's very light. Mike, you can also use it lying in bed right after surgery, which is a big plus. So if you're early out of surgery, sometimes performing this in bed is just nicer. You can put the knee glide in your bed with you. Just do the range of motion that you can without being too painful. Just bump up against it, stop there, and go back down. Over time, it should become easier. The closer it is to my body, the more flexion I will have. The further away, the more I can work on my extension with it. But same concept, you're just laying down. That's right. As a therapist... Oftentimes, out of surgery, you have to assist the person like this if they're really having problems. And this is not very easy to do because it's tender, the patient is not liking you to hold on to their knee. When they can allow it to rest and just take a little assistance, just guiding it, much better response by the patient, everything is better, better range of motion, and you can actually enjoy the therapy. All right, now one muscle in particular can tighten up with after a knee surgery from sitting a lot and walking and compensating for that sore knee, and that's the hip flexor. It's not so much the knee, but if this muscle gets tight deep in here, it doesn't allow your hip to extend. So when you walk, you'll find this kind of a limp going on, and it's up here that needs to be addressed. Mike's going to show you a nice stretch. This is something you're not going to do the first couple of weeks out of therapy, but more later on, maybe a, a few months afterwards where you're that's tightened up, what do we do? This is a nice stretch for that. So you're gonna sit on the edge of the firm surface. You can try your bed as long as the edge is firm. Some people will do it on a countertop or table if they're able to get up there. What you're gonna do is lay on your back, bring both knees to your chest. I'm gonna drop the tight side down first off the edge of the mat. Then I'm gonna bend my knee as much as you comfortably can. Obviously, if you had any replacement, you might be a little limited there. I'm gonna hold that and then bring my opposite leg up towards my chest. Keep this in a nice straight line. I'm gonna hold for roughly 30 seconds. Just try to breathe and relax through it. Once you're done with one side, you can stretch the other side. Just see if you notice a difference. Maybe this side is tight as well. So perform it on both sides then. If just one side is tight, just do two sets of 30 seconds stretching on that leg. Now, if it's not an option for you to get in this position, which it may not be because of a knee and other problems, you can do this in a chair. It doesn't stretch it quite as well, but it's, at least you get some stretch in a safe, comfortable position. So not a stool like I have here, but an actual chair without an armrest. Kitchen chair would work well. You're gonna take the tight hip and bring it down like this and stretch it back like this. Okay, so you get a stretch there. If you lean forward like this, you will not get the stretch up tall. Just let it go down and as you bring that back, you'll feel that stretch right in there. Actually, you'll do the good side first and more than likely that tight side, you're gonna feel it before it even gets down and you're starting to stretch it and then you'll just work it back. Nice to do it on a smooth floor without a shoe on so you can actually slide the foot across that floor. Good option for those not comfortable with that. So the last tip is to actually strengthen your hip muscles, specifically your hip abductor muscles located on the side of your hips, as well as your glute max muscle. These muscles are important with walking. Sometimes you may be compensating with your ankle and knee because these muscles are weak. So if you get these stronger, it can take strain off of your knee. So the first exercise we're gonna do is strengthen the hip abductors. You can hold on to a cane if you're using one. If you want more support, do them at a countertop or a rail. 
railing if you have it available. Or even the wall. Or the wall. And all we're going to do is do some side stepping. You're going to go one direction. If, say, you have 10 feet available, do 10 feet one way. And then go the other direction. You're going to get a little bit of hip strengthening as well as some balance activity going on with this. So just go slow and controlled. Go back and forth three or four times. Make sure to keep a nice, good, upright posture with this. Don't let yourself lean. If you have a really weak hip abductor, you might kind of lean like this. Yeah, that weak hip abductor causes this waddling uh, gait, which is very awkward and throws you off. If you do not want to do the stepping sideways, you can simply stand still. I've got the wall for balance and go out to the side like this, five to 10 repetitions, nice and slow, good control, and make sure both feet are done regardless of which knee was replaced. So now we're gonna strengthen the glute muscles. Because people had a knee replacement, we're not gonna show our typical version where you kneel because that's probably very uncomfortable for you. Instead, we'll show a standing variation. That's right, so again, we're gonna Glute maximus, the big muscle right back here, very important for walking, going up and down steps, etc. Go to a cupboard or a solid surface like this for balance. Okay, we're gonna work the right side first. You're gonna bend this knee about to a 90 degree, whatever is comfortable. The most important part of this, you're gonna keep your back reasonably straight, resting here, lift up, and then lift that leg up like this. If you've got a wall behind you like I do, just kick a hole in it. No, I'm just kidding, move here, move, get another position like this, and we're gonna go up and down. Feeling that muscle work. Now, if it feels like it's not working, one little trick you can do is rotate, and Mike has already done it, that leg in this way, and that isolates that glute maximus, and we're gonna go down to that foot hits your calf, and then up about that far. Work it with very good control. Hold it for just a second, come back down. Nice, slow, controlled motion. I already feel that muscle specifically starting to burn a little bit in just this little time. Make sure you do both sides as long as you feel safe and comfortable with it. It's gonna help you out in the long run. All right, now obviously all seven of these are not gonna to pertain to everybody out there. Go through them, make sure you try them. You'll find out you're gonna have good success with some of them and the other ones will not apply to you. So use the ones that work well and do them consistently. Mike, we got more information. Yes, yeah, so if you've recently had a knee replacement, you can check out our Total Knee Replacement Fitness Program. It is actually a whole playlist of videos with myself and an old coworker of ours and you can click the videos that pertain to you. It shows you exercises and and stretches to do so many weeks out. That's right, it's very, very well organized and uh, yeah, it's a wonderful program. Good luck with that and have a good day. Bob and